2020 was not a good year, but it wasn't supposed to be because every year has the possibility of being the greatest year and the worst year in one for you. And so, you know, was, was 2019 that awesome of a year? Was 2018, 2017, 2016? Do you remember how crazy 2016 was? But you got through it. You survived. And you got through this year too. Because the truth is that I, I have to remind myself, every time that I go to the gym in the morning, I get a little bit nervous. And I think, can I do this? Do I have it in me? Do I feel well? Can I, can I give it my all in the gym? And then I remember, I've never not survived a workout. I've never not got through a workout. I've never not been able to face a challenge and stumble and fall and not do well, but, but get through because I'm still here. And 2020 was not a good year, but here we are. Here you are. Here I am. And honestly, as weird as it is to say, I am right now the happiest I've ever been in my life. And, and I don't know why coming out of this year that's the case. But I do know that in this year that we just had, as hard as it was, as tough as it was, as terrible and scared as I felt so much through the year, <laughs> we got through the other side. There's never been a year we haven't gotten through. There's never been a season we haven't gotten through. There's never been a workout for me. Even though I might go a little slower, even though I might throw up or something, I got through. You got through this. I got through this. So how can I say that I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life when everything that's happening is happening to us? Well, there's lots of days that I don't feel that way. But looking back, I realized that this year was a huge gift for me. It forced me to go home. And as an entrepreneur and as someone who spent a lot of time working through the years, I wasn't home. And now I'm home. Now I'm home. I'm here. I'm with my kids all day, every day, even though I'm working. And I know them better now. And I see their gifts better. And I see their struggles better. And I can be here for them more. And so I'm super thankful for that. But also, it's been the toughest year for me personally. I've been the most confused I've questioned the most about what I'm doing and whether I have it and whether I can do it or not. And I'm still here. And next year's going to be even better for us, right? You know, I think back to my grandfather. My grandfather just had his 92nd birthday. He was born in 1928. Born in 1928 in Germany. Well, outside of Germany, in Lithuania, but to a German culture. <clears throat> and when he left Lithuania during the Second World War and actually became a refugee in Germany. <clears throat> and then when he survived the fire bomb bombings and survived being a refugee in poverty, he came to Canada with nothing in 1950. And then he built a business and then he survived along the way. But I think of my grandfather and I think of that whole generation. And I think of the six years of war that they had to live through and then the rebuild process. I think of how scary and disruptive and terrible that is. And then I think about the moment that we're in now. You know, I'm 37. I was born in the early 80s. Have we had a world war that we've had to fight and had to face? Have we had something super, super disruptive? Yes, terrible things have happened. There have been, there have been terrorist attacks. There have been all kinds of things in our life. But, but nothing that stopped the entire world for as long as we've had to stop. And we're only nine months into this. Other generations have gone on for three years, for, for six years, for the Vietnam War. Other generations have had to fight things collectively for a very long time, and they got through it. And so I think it's just going to get better from here, right? It's not like as tough as things are, it's only going to get better. And the beauty in the moment that we're in right now is we have – both uh, the ability and the reason and an incredible amount of grace and forgiveness to do whatever we need to do right now to fix our life and make things happy. So, you know, like I, I run a business, I own a business, I started it in 2006, and this year has been a really big shift and pivot for us. One, we've had to. Two, 
we've gotten the opportunity to, to look at the business in a completely fresh set of, through a set, fresh set of eyes. But on top of that, what's the most interesting to me and the most mind blowing is I could take a step back and decide, okay, you know, as you're building a business, as you're building a life, as you're building a company, you make decisions and then suddenly three, four, five, six, seven years later, you find yourself living still with those decisions that you made a really long time ago. And you never stop and you never reassess and you never come back to them because they're kind of working or not working or this or that, but it's just not important. And so I never reassess the decisions I made years ago and reassess whether we should continue doing things the way we were doing them or not because I'm so busy focused on building and what's next. And this year for me in business has been an opportunity to say, well, what do I want to do? What do we need to do? Where can we set our eyes on the next few years to really grow and really help people and really come out of this stronger than ever? You know, when I think about my health, this year has been terrible for my health, actually, because I'm like 15 pounds heavier than I was this year last, the last year at this time. And my diet is not as strict as it should be as it needs to be and my sleep isn't as good and I'm not waking up every morning at the same time and I'm just letting things slip and so you know I've spent the last week thinking about the areas that I need to to raise my standards that I need to that I need to come back and find those old grooves and, and build back those old habits and so for me with my business with health with my relationships with my family I feel this freedom to be able to say this is who I am this is where I want to go. Who do I need to become to get the things that I want? This is who I've been. These are the decisions I've made. Are they still decisions that help serve me for who I need to be, for where I want to go, for the things that I want? Why do I want the things that I want? Can I stop judging myself for them and just admit it? And so this year has been the toughest year for me <laughs> out of any year, like you probably. And yet, right now, I find myself coming out of a week of rest, coming out a week of questioning, why do I want the things that I want? Why do I do the things that I do? But what it sets me up for is what's next? What is to come for us? So we will survive this the way that my grandfather's generation survived the wars. We will have an opportunity to rebuild and to party and to celebrate when life goes back to normal. But what type of normal? I've decided that my normal is going to be not going back to the way things were, but, but making sure to hold on to the things that I love about right now. I love spending time with my kids and my family, and I love working from home. So that's going to keep going. I love being able to interview people and connect with them on the We Do Hard Things podcast. I've learned more in the last three months from connecting with amazing people than, than I have probably for the first few years of running my business even. And more than anything, it's about holding true to the, the goals that I have. And so for me, what I'm really focusing on, what I'm really working on is ensuring that I create a plan. So I set a goal. I create a plan to execute, I execute, I assess, I adjust. I think that's what Errol Dobler told me to do in the We Do Hard Things podcast when I interviewed him. I think he said something like that, but that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and so for this year, for me and for you, look for the opportunities to say thank you that I got to experience this part of it. Look for the opportunities to make new, a new life, a new structure, a new focus, a new company, a new division, a new, a new offer. You can change. You can pivot. You're not stuck. This is the time to become whomever you need to become to get the things that you want. This is a gift that you and I have been given, and it's up to you to accept it. It's up to you to welcome it, and it's up to you to take advantage of this gift. So I wish you all the best for next year. I hope that you rock it, and I'll see you over there.